is with me now. It's the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Secretary General, thank you for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Let's start with the war on Gaza. You've warned about the dangers of escalation since October the 7th, but it's happening right now. Houthi attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, and now in the last five days, the UK and the US intervening militarily. How worried are you about this unraveling the fragile peace in Yemen that's existed in recent months after a long war? I'm extremely worried, and uh, that is the reason why I believe we need at the same time to have a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza, at the same time to have a serious negotiation on de-escalation in Lebanon. Lebanon, we cannot have another Gaza in Lebanon, and we need to stop what's happening in Gaza. Uh, and uh, uh, Lebanon is at the present moment, in my opinion, the most dangerous risk of spillover that we have. Uh, we have the West Bank, in which uh, <laughs> tensions are extremely high, and uh, more recently, uh, the incidents in the Red Sea. And I have to say that freedom of navigation is something that is essential. But has because Western the best, military intervention made the, the situation best, worse? The best way to defend uh, the, the Palestinians in Gaza is not to create a situation in which prices will go up, in which uh, Egypt will be facing a dramatic situation with the Suez Canal. So my appeal is also for de-escalation, de-escalation in the Red Sea uh, to allow for freedom of navigation to take place. But Western intervention, is that helpful or does it make things worse? I hope that this will now lead to de-escalation from both sides. As you know, in the last week, there's been a case in the International Court of Justice that's an important part of the UN, with Israel being taken uh, to court under the Genocide Convention. Now, I know very well you're not going to comment on that case, but how important is it that all UN members, including Israel, comply with whatever the court decides, including any provisional measures they decide? Well, as you know, there is... Uh a sacred principle of separation of powers and so obviously I will not uh, intervene in relation to what it's up for the court to decide. But the International Court of Justice uh, is part of the UN and it is a body with extreme importance in international relations and so we are very much supportive of the International Court of Justice and very much supportive of the need for all states to abide by the decisions of the court. When you look at the death toll 24,000 people at least have died in Gaza, about half of them uh, are women and children. And your own staff, 152 UN workers have died. As their boss, as their employer, with a duty of care for them, do you think there should be legal accountability for their deaths? Well, first of all, you can't imagine what it is to manage an organization in which 152 of our uh, uh, workers uh, have been killed, and some of them have been killed with their families in their own houses. Uh, and uh, I think there will be a moment in which we need to look seriously into that question. At the present moment, our most important duty is to make sure that humanitarian aid is delivered at a much larger scale than it is the case now, and that Israel removes the obstacles that uh, still exist to have a massive uh, distribution of humanitarian aid, knowing that for that to be really effective, we need a humanitarian ceasefire. It's not just UN workers. You look at journalists, 82 journalists and media workers killed. Do you fear, do you suspect, Israel is deliberately targeting journalists and other thought leaders in Gaza? I think there is a, a way this war has been conducted in which uh, there has been no effective protection of civilians. Uh, I think there are violations of international humanitarian law. And indeed, um, I've been saying time and time again, and now it has been proven by, for instance, the report of Oxfam and a few others, uh, this is unprecedented. The number of civilian casualties that is taking place in Gaza uh, uh, especially if uh, you look into all the other conflicts that we had since I am Secretary General, the number of civilian casualties per day is unprecedented in any other conflict that we have witnessed until now, since I am Secretary General. Who should run Gaza when the war is over? I believe that uh, when the war is over and after a period of transition that will be necessary because uh, I don't see the Palestinian Authority entering Gaza with the, the Israeli army uh, 
in Gaza, but I believe it should be a reinvigorated Palestinian authority and in the context of the creation of uh, the solution that we all need, which is finally a, a, a Palestinian state, a two-state solution with full guarantees of security for the state of Israel, but also with the, the recognition of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. You say a two-state solution, but let's be honest, Secretary General, you've listened to Prime Minister Netanyahu over the years, you know what his government stands for, you're dealing with an Israeli government that doesn't believe in a two-state solution. Well, things change. And uh, I believe that, uh, uh, unfortunately, politicians tend sometimes to transform problem, uh, opportunities into problems. But I think that this is the moment to transform this dramatic problem into an opportunity for a solution for the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. And the solution for the Israeli people and the Palestinian people will not be possible if there is not the, if we have not the existence of two states living in peace and security between the two. How are relations between the UN and Israel? Because your spokesman described them recently in the last 24 hours as complex and challenging. For example, how many times have you spoken to Prime Minister Netanyahu since October the 7th? I have asked uh, to speak to Prime Minister Netanyahu until now that uh, phone call has not been received. In easy. three months but, he hasn't uh, spoken to I've been talking to other people and uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, we are working with Israel based on the interests of the Israeli people and the interests of the Palestinian people and nothing will make us move away from that principle. But there is one thing that for us is clear. For the Secretary General of the UN and for the Secretary of the UN, there are not double standards. We are for the Charter and for international law. In the Ukraine, as in Gaza, and is anywhere else. And this is something the Israeli government will also need to understand. Secretary General, you called for a ceasefire. The US and the Security Council have called for a ceasefire, but it goes beyond Gaza, doesn't it? The Security Council can't reach the decisions on nearly anything. They seem to be completely dysfunctional and divided. How worried are you about the state of the Security Council, given its importance in international well, I'm affairs? I'm worried about the enormous geopolitical divides, the lack of trust that exists today among the big powers. And that is the reason why the Security Council is not working properly. And it's the reason why uh, we see so many crises erupting around the world and so many other powers uh, uh, adopting uh, reckless uh, behaviors because they know that there is total impunity. We need to rebuild trust and we need uh, those that have more responsibilities because they are the most powerful in the world to understand that uh, multilateralism must work, multilateralism must be respected and multilateral borders must be allowed to act efficiently. Finally, let's talk about multilateralism. You're here in Davos. Uh, there are lots of other issues as well as the war in Gaza or the war in Ukraine. What are you hoping to achieve here? Well, there are several things that are important. Uh, it's not in doubles that decisions will be mm. taken. But uh, I think it is very important that here in Davos there is a strong push uh, for climate action. Uh, we had a important step uh, in uh, um, the COP uh, in uh, the Dubai. There was the recognition of the need of a transition from fossil fuels, but it's time for the entire economic community to recognize that we need to phase out fossil fuels if we are to rescue the planet. On the other hand, um, there is an important discussion on artificial intelligence. We have just created a high-level advisory body with uh, about 30 experts from all over the world, uh, half women, half men, half north, half south, that has produced an interim report. We want to have a flexible network form of governance of uh, artificial intelligence able to take as much profit as possible of the enormous potential of artificial intelligence, but also to be able to limit the risks and to avoid the increase of inequalities that the digital divide is already causing in the world. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, thank you for joining us here on this cold rooftop this evening here in Davos. Thank you for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Okay, thank you for that, Jay.